out yet, so his leverage just isn't in place to start having that discussion to to play the hardball that he's trying to play. I just that's my opinion personally. I think that having those title defenses in general, when, once you put yourself into that position with the UFC, the UFC does take very good care of the champions once the champions have had those defenses and they're winning. They're getting the pay-per-view points. They're getting all, all of that type of money in that regard. But him playing hardball at this point and him talking about leaving, now the thing is, is if he wins, there's a thing in the UFC contracts, it's called the champion's clause. If he is to win, then that is going to renew. Now, there is a, a certain stipulation as far as how many times that can continue to uh, to extend the deal. But, you know, it, as long as he keeps on winning as a champion, there he's not going to get out of this contract. There is no fighting out of this contract. Now, if he loses, then obviously he or loses or relinquishes the title. He can potentially leave and go elsewhere. But I think that if... Francis Ngannou were to leave the UFC, that would be a horrible mistake. Yes, he would be a massive free agent signing to whatever other organization out there would pick him up, whether it be someone like a, a one, the PFL, the Bellator, whoever it may be. He would be a massive star. He's still only 35 years old, and as a heavyweight, he's got a lot of time on the clock as a heavyweight, especially when you have Thor's hammer for a right fist. You know, I, I think that uh, though, as a whole, his marketability would definitely tank. It would be nothing in comparison to what it would be. Say he goes on a title defense run, and you know, if he if he defends it, you know, four or five times, he could be potentially considered as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. And add that to all the lore of his, his backstory and the uh, just the human interest element of the Francis Ngannou rise to fame, that would be the ultimate cash cows for him to stay underneath the UFC umbrella because whether the UFC haters like to hear it or not or the you know the Bellator and the one stands or the, the people who don't really drink from the UFC Kool-Aid, it matters in terms of your marketability and your earning potential for everyone from... Hollywood to casual fans to product marketing deals, those three letters matter, period. So if he were to leave the UFC to go and take a massive fight contract deal with some other organization, he would be passing over a dollar to make a quarter when we're talking about things in the long run. I just don't find that to be an advisable route. Hopefully he goes through this fight this next month and if things go his way, they renegotiate and he gets the deal that he's looking for. And we can squash this discussion and let Francis go on to be the boogeyman killer and market him the way that he should be. Let him be that true champion. Another big soundbite that Dana had that was all over the place from this interview was Dana White's comments on Stockton's bad boy, the 209 OG the general of the Nick Diaz army, Nick Diaz himself. Now, Dana said that he thinks that Nick Diaz should be done with fighting because he doesn't enjoy it anymore, and he's doing it because he has to for the money. Now, Dana also made the comparison that when he thinks of Nick Diaz and fighting, he imagines a person who's stuck in traffic, hammer fists in their steering wheel on the way to a job that they hate. He's not completely off, but he's not on either. Nick has said it for years that he doesn't necessarily enjoy fighting. He's just great at it. But that's a message that can also be confused, especially with someone like Nick who has, through the years, talked about how he doesn't always have the best way to convey his feelings or his true feelings through his words, and they get misconstrued in certain capacities. Now, sometimes in order to truly achieve greatness at something, you have to hate it. You have to love it so much that you hate it. The grind, the sacrifice, the everything that you put into this opportunity with zero guarantees. Success is guaranteed to nobody. Dustin Poirier talked about it this last weekend. The media always eats up these sound bites that come about, like especially the ones that Nick had in his last fight leading up to Robbie Lawler with Brett Okamoto once again with an incredible interview. 
but you had uh you you had those comments that he made and Dominic Cruz was in the headlines this uh this last fight a couple of weeks ago for having some surly moments with the media but you have to understand that these fight week interviews you're getting these guys at one of the most raw and like on the edge of ready to snap and like want to just say the real or let let the true emotions out sort of situation, especially depending on how tough that weight cut is. The, once you're getting these guys on media day on a Wednesday to a Thursday in the UFC, when you get those interviews, you have to understand that these guys are at a, now at this point a massive calorie deficit. They're still training to get those last few pounds off by the time that they step on the scales on Friday. There's not exactly the uh, the most ebbs and flows of the brain chemistry going on because of the lack of hydration. You're going through just massive changes in your body at this time. Some guys are teetering the brink of death while you're in the middle of cutting weight. So when they lash out in this way, it's something that I always have the Nate Diaz, I'm not surprised sort of adage to simply because it's not a normal moment for him. You know, it's, it's a moment where we start asking those digging questions and in some of these media scrums, they've been asked the same thing almost a dozen times over from how many ever countless outlets out there. So yeah, it does get annoying and I get it. I just, I get it in that regard, but I, I think that Nick still has fight in him. If Nick really wants to fight. And even if it is just for money on that side, why should Nick Diaz, if he doesn't want to, or if he does want to fight, why shouldn't he get that opportunity? Now, Dana White also said that he's feeling pretty good about where the UFC is. They had an even bigger year in 2021 than they've had ever in the past, which is phenomenal considering the exponential growth that happened in 2020 due to the pandemic when the UFC was the only thing going on. There was a massive spike in the traction and the popularity and the reach of what the UFC had. He said that he isn't necessarily fighting with other promoters, but we all know at the end of the day, that's not necessarily the truth, that you bring some smoke to the boss's way, and he's ready to have it. He's no vegetarian. He is ready for all the beef. And we've seen that time and time again with any promoter that kind of chirps or says anything in his direction. You know that the boss is ready to come back and slang that fire right back in their direction. Again, this was a massive year for the UFC. This was uh, a year that they were able to get back in front of fans. They were able to sell out Madison Square Garden. They were able to sell out the Houston Toyota Center, the T-Mobile Arena. They were able to do things in record numbers that weren't achieved in the past. You know, I think that that's a, that's a testament to the growth of the sport overall. The ESPN deal has, uh, has a, a short time left with it, but that's also something that Dana spoke about, that he wishes to continue that relationship past what it is right now. Obviously, negotiations, once it comes down to it on the cutting room floor, they can go every which direction possible, but... I think that it is it's the best situation for the UFC to have. ESPN's pipeline is massive. The reach of the general cable cards that they have, all, all, all of that content and the advertising and the branding that are able to go out through the network side of the television as well as there's been through the last decade people that have cut the cable for or cut the cord, if you will, for – you know, like I say, in, in droves, the the numbers or the shift of the masses going towards streaming services, the proof is in the pudding. So having yourself aligned with someone who is that much or is that big of a player for so many other, however many countless millions of people across the world, the way that ESPN is, it only makes sense to stay there. You stay behind that one simple paywall that ESPN has, and you're able to get all the additional content that they have, in, you know, where whether it may be from the football side of things to the in depth more the uh, the the gambling pro programs that they have on there. They have uh, they have some of the the docu series that that are only on the ESPN Plus side. There's there's value that you get for more than just fighting. And some people ask, well, why do you still then need to have a subscription to Fight Pass? Well, Fight Pass, really and truly, that's now became a launching pad for a lot of the prospective talent that's out there for these organizations that, that we're going to talk about a little bit in this next segment through the weekend rundown. 
but th- that's that's been a launching pad now since the UFC has had pretty much the majority of all their cards. Every now and then you have the early prelims that are on UFC Fight Pass, but you get Fight Pass that is the library and the database for all of your old Pride events, your old Ultimate Fighter series, the past cards of the UFC. You get all of that library of content, plus you get all of the additional events, like uh, you have the Fury Grappling event that's happening this weekend that has guys like Nicky Rod taking on friend of the show uh, Steve Mowry. They had just the other night. They had Craig Jones taking on uh, taking on Cowboy Cerrone, and in some of these events, like you have Submission Underground from Chael P. Son, and you have the regional shows like the LFA, Fury, FAC, CFFC. All of these shows have one central platform on Fight Pass. So why do you need two? That is why you need two in a nutshell right there. Stick around after the break, folks. We're going to be getting into the weekend rundown as well as talking some three rounds to close out the hour on this Christmas special show or holiday special show, should I say. Hit us up on the Go Fast Energy Drink hotline and text line at 303-831-1340. I'm Jordan Kurtz. This is the MMA Plug presented to you by denversportsbetting.com on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio. I threw my hands in the sky, bound to get closer to God. 